Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your mowers have practically built Stir themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv, and today on the channel, well, we're not going to be talking about this tank particularly, but uh, this is kind of what inspired it. This project isn't finished by any means, but uh, a few months ago, I was on one of my Facebook groups asked to do with the M4 Sherman tank, and there was a picture of a tank very, very similar to this. Now, this is an M4 A3 late with the uh, horizontal volute suspension, okay? Uh, the easy eight suspension as they would call it, but you'll notice the turrets kind of funny on this It's actually a recycled 75 turret that's had a um, a loader's hatch uh, cut into it and uh, It's a low bustle turret at that. So this is really a unique piece. It's got the cheek armor here and I'll show you a picture of what I'm trying to model here in just a minute Anyway, so I see this tank, and one of the comments was, uh, that, well, this is being loaded, or this tank was being loaded to go over to um, either Okinawa or the Philippines to be staged for uh, Operation Downfall. And this one gentleman commented that his daughter had just come back from, from college, I won't say which one, but had come back from college, and they were talking about some things and she mentioned that her professor had said oh the United States was never going to invade Japan that's just a, a rumor that was just something that was made up well needless to say that got my blood boiling because my dad was actually preparing for that particular invasion and I guess there are actual professors out there who are uh, skewing the truth and teaching things that that just aren't aren't true about our history. So I'd love to set that guy straight, um, listen to his philosophical BS as to why he thinks that the facts aren't the facts. So I digress. Yeah, it did get me pretty upset. So uh, I decided I was going to model this because I didn't have a Sherman like this with the Easy Gate suspension and the, uh, uh, and the recycled turret. So, wow, cool. Anyway, today... What we're going to talk about is that Operation Downfall. Um, we're going to just cover a real quick piece about it. There was uh, two parts to it. There was going to be an invasion of Ryukyu and then the invasion of the main uh, island of Honshu. And Ryukyu was where my dad was going to land. It just so happened to be that Ryukyu was also going to be their major stand. That's really where the Japanese were going to throw the rest of most of the rest of their resources to try and uh, get the Americans to back off. They wanted the uh, uh, the attrition to be so high. So uh, they were going to throw most of their resources there. Fortunately, we, we didn't have to go through with that um, uh, with that invasion. So today, Mad Dog Merv is going to set the record straight with a little bit of fact about what really happened with Operation Downfall. And while you folks check out the video, I'm going to keep working on this tank. Well, so this is what started it all. A uh, post on one of the Facebook pages that I follow, and I thought this was really cool when I first saw it. It's an M4A3 E8 Sherman with a 75 millimeter turret, but I could see the turret had the uh, add-on armor, and it also had the way the commander's cupola sits kind of a little bit funny. I knew that this was one of those recycled turrets. This is absolutely cool. And of course, I gotta build a model of one of these. But it, like I said, in the comments, somebody had mentioned that their uh, daughter's professor had made mention that uh, there was no such thing as uh, plans to invade Japan at the end of the, uh, towards the end of the war, to end the war. And that really got my blood boiling because I knew better. But before we talk about the operation, let's talk a little bit more about this tank, shall we? And the build that I'm going to do of it. So here are some of the turrets that were used uh, later on in the war. And on the very far right is the recycled turret that I am going to replicate. You see that it had a loader's hatch cut into it, which was kind of neat. And it had this uh, cheek armor 
added on. Some of it was already welded on, some of it was just a thicker uh, piece of armor already in the turret. If you saw the piece I did some time ago on Pacific Shermans, I have already done this turret once before. It's the D50878 recycled turret, 75 millimeter, and I had put it on this particular one that I did for uh, an M4A2 from uh, uh, Okinawa. For that one I used a resin copy, but this time I'm just going to use a plastic one out of an M4A2 kit. Went ahead and put this uh, cheek armor on it that I had. I mean, I got lots of parts laying around. Uh, cut a hole, put in the loader's hatch, uh, painted the whole thing black so I could kind of, um, well, see what I was doing, if you will, and uh, added the few other little pieces that I needed to try and get this turret correct for what I was doing. You can see that it is a low bustle turret, and on the corners at the bottom, I had to grind those back a little bit, just like on the real turret, so that it wouldn't hit the uh, large hatches at the front of the tank. So this is kind of uh, well where uh, where most of my modification went into this. The rest of the tank, the chassis, I just built straight from the box. It was an old. Uh, DML kit, which turned out to be an old Italieri kit, and I just built that pretty much straight from the box. I painted it with my mix of Tamiya Olive Drab and a little bit of the uh, dark yellow to lighten it up just a little bit, and here's the base coat on it. I'm going to go ahead and paint all the little details and uh, the periscopes and go ahead and put some decals on it. I used the dry transfer decals from Archer and here it is uh, pretty much just ready to throw a little bit of gear on it and it'll be done. So there were 538 of these tanks built starting in January of 1945 by the Fisher Armory. Most of them went to the Marines although some of them did wind up in Europe. So let's look at Operation Olympic. It was the first part of the invasion of Japan that was to be. It was a two-part invasion. They were going to have Olympic and Coronet. And Olympic was to take place in November of 1945. My dad's unit, the 25th Infantry Division, well, it was slated to go in uh, on the first wave of the attack. Their town was the little town of uh, Miyazaki, the Miyazaki Airfield which would be just on the left hand side of the river outlet here on this particular map that's a vintage map from that period of time anyway there was a strategic airfield there that needed to be knocked out so that the aircraft well couldn't attack and kamikaze and all those other things that they were going to plan on doing to the um, invading fleet this picture taken on March 18th of 1945 from, a, from an American reconnaissance plane, probably a hell diver, you can plainly see the airfield and how it looked at that time, and pretty much how it would have looked like in November of 45. But keep in mind the Japanese were trying to build these up as quickly as possible because they wanted to hit the Americans very hard, right on the beaches. They wanted to try to make this as costly a battle as possible so the Americans would sue for peace. I found these decals online that happen to be for an Amy 6 m 50 and you can see that this is uh, the markings for the Miyazaki Air Base in uh, 19, well, February 1945. So uh, I picked up a set of these and I'm going to be building uh, a zero that looks like this. Anyway, uh, that's what the objective was day one when they were uh, supposed to start the invasion. Here's what the beaches looked like just to the south of the airfield. Uh, this is how they look today. Absolutely beautiful place. So my dad was part of a and a tank platoon in a headquarters company and they were training to use the M20 75 millimeter recoilless rifle. Now this had uh, two purposes. One you could fire a solid shot for trying to take out things like bunkers and whatnot, and also for canister fire to try and clear out personnel and whatnot. So mostly what their target was is uh, these kind of machine gun bunkers. This is what they would have been called up to try and eliminate. 
uh, because of course armor getting armor on the beach would have been a little bit slower and more problematic and they would have eventually had it yes but these guys again were were up on the front line and you can see here here's an airborne trooper uh, showing how these uh, were fired from the shoulder Operation Olympic, the invasion of Kyushu, was to begin on X Day, which was scheduled for the 1st of November 1945. The combined Allied Armada would have been the largest ever assembled, including 42 aircraft carriers, 24 battleships, and 400 destroyers and escorts. 14 U.S. divisions were scheduled to take part in the, in the initial landings. Kyushu was to be invaded by the 6th U.S. Army at three points, Miyazaki, Arake, and Kushi Kino. If the clock were drawn on a map of Kyushu, these points would roughly correspond to 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and 7 o'clock, respectively. There were to be 35 landing beaches. All were named after automobiles like Austin, Buick, Cadillac, and so forth through Stutz, Winton, and Zephyr. The invasion was not intended to conquer the entire island, just the southernmost third of it as indicated by the dashed line on the map labeled General Limit of Northern Advance. Once secure, southern Kyushu would offer a staging ground and a valuable group of air bases for Operation Coronet, which was to begin on the 1st of March 1946 against the island of Honshu on the Kanto Plain south of the capital. Anyway, folks, this is in no way detailed. I uh, just wanted to give a brief overview of this first part of the planned invasion of Japan, which, yes, it was planned. Uh, yes, my dad was going to be a part of it. And once the atomic bomb was dropped and Japan capitulated, well, he wound up going into Japan as part of the occupation force and spent till uh, mid-1946 there. Hey, thanks for tuning in today, and uh, we'll see you again soon.